Breaking the Wall to Digital Democracy. How Sociophysics Shapes the Future of Smart Societies. Dirk Helbing, ETH Zurich. On the 9th of November 1989, I watched the German wall falling on TV with tears of happiness in my eyes. It's about time to build digital democracy. The problems of the world are complex. We face with financial crisis, with conflict and war and climate change. So how to solve these problems? Well, can we use all these data that are now becoming available? Every single action that we do actually leaves traces in the digital domain. And this certainly can help us to improve the situation in the world. But how to use all this big data? Some people think we could run society like a big machine. So it would require us to understand all the bits and pieces, how they interact with each other, and how they can be controlled. And in fact, companies such as Google seem to be working on this and basically to start to reprogram our society. So after the invention of self-driving cars, the automation of society is next. Well, how would that work, actually? One would use artificial intelligence algorithms in order to learn what we do, why we do it, and how our behavior can be manipulated. And in fact, today, we are already pretty much remotely controlled by personalized information. And there is quite a bit of Big Brother in it, but it doesn't work well enough, really, to solve the big problems of humanity. So, some countries are thinking about going one step further, actually, and to create something like a cybernetic society and to introduce a citizen score where everything that you do would earn you plus points or minus points. So, for example, anything that you click on the web, if the political party likes it, that would get you plus points. If your friends would click the wrong thing, that would be bad. And in fact, that would determine your jobs, your loans, and your travel visa. I don't think that is actually a good solution for us. Not only because these powerful information systems could be terribly misused and hacked, but also because personalized information seems to promote polarization in society. And that's certainly not good for us. Moreover, we are now living in a filter bubble made up of personalized information, so we don't see the world in an unbiased way anymore. We are locked in a golden cage of information tailored to us, and that would limit our way of thinking about the world. How should we come up with all this massive innovation that we need to solve the world's problems if we're living, if we're locked in such filter bubbles? So we really need mass innovation. And how we would we get there? Well, I personally believe that this formula that more data means more knowledge, means more power, means more success is actually not quite right. It's true, though, that the behavior of people can be pretty well predicted in many cases. But that doesn't mean we could predict the future of society. Society is not a machine. It cannot be controlled and steered like a car. And the reason for this is that there are all these interactions among us. So even if we would know everything about every single person, we couldn't prevent things from happening as the traffic jams. What is the reason for this? Basically, there are cascading effects that happen. And these cascading effects let things get out of control, as we've seen that during the world financial crisis, Lehman Brothers collapsed, and then in the aftermath of that, hundreds of banks collapsed. And that created, actually, damages of hundreds of billions of dollars. So we need to create 
a resilient society that actually can cope with unexpected kinds of events that result from cascading effects in many cases that are many years back. I personally believe that no matter how big fences we would build, they would not solve our problems. And if I see these pictures, they move me a lot because as a child, I have been passing the border to the former GDR to visit my grandmother in Dresden. And these were never-ending moments of anxiety and insecurity. These were moments that were very inhumane. And so, for that reason, I had really tears in my eyes when in November 89, the Berlin Wall fell down. So, we always need to remember a society worth living needs freedom, and it's time to build digital democracy. That means to build digital tools that would enable people to take better decisions and to bring the best ideas of many minds together. That means to build collective intelligence that requires diversity and it requires independent decision making. Well, it's true that we have an exponential explosion of data volume and processing power, but that wouldn't mean that our world would be more controllable in a top-down way because systemic complexity is increasing even faster as we go on networking the world. So we need to have a new paradigm, and that paradigm is distributed control. So what we should do is to use the enabling technology of the Internet of Things to marry democracy and capitalism together. If we don't do this, if we don't do this paradigm shift, then I think we're in the danger of losing democracy. And in fact, we might lose capitalism too, because challenged by the digital revolution, about 50% of jobs will be lost in the next 10 to 20 years. And that will be a challenge for employees, but also for companies. About 40% of today's top 500 companies are expected to disappear within 10 years' time. So that will be pretty disruptive. And the question is how to create new jobs and earn money in the future. So in the past, we've made most money by rationalization, by using the economies of scale. But if 50% jobs are lost when we have to rebuild half of our economy, and that will be a digital economy, we will create immaterial goods, and that will require co-creation. And that means the building of an information and innovation ecosystem. So we need interoperability such that we can combine existing products and services to build new services and products and thereby unleash exponential, even combinatorial innovation. And we have done a first step actually to build such a platform to enable people called NervousNet. And in fact, if we want to solve the world's problems and interact with each other in a far more favorable way and also save our environment, then we need to measure the external impacts of our decisions and actions. And we can do that now with the Internet of Things. In every single smartphone, we have about 15 sensors, and that could be used to measure our world around us, in particular, if we connect these smartphones with each other, then we can build a global measurement system and measure things such as acceleration, for example. So if all our smartphones would start shaking, that would probably be an earthquake, and then we would want our friends and family to be warned to get out in a safe place. So having such a system would be a nice thing, but we need the system that we can trust and that's why we believe that informational self-determination is really at the center of this. So NervousNet allows you to decide which centers to open to create data for yourself or to share it with others. And we personally think that we should build the Internet of Things as a citizen web managed by the citizens and available for everyone to create a data commons that would enable people to take better decisions and establish their own businesses and create social value. Well, this kind of data could be used to create greater awareness 
compasses for decision makers and we could make things visible that could not be seen beforehand, such as social capital, trust, solidarity, reputation, for example, things that matter for our society. We could map epidemic spreading with services such as influenza net. We could map noise and also light. And in fact, we could turn your smartphone into a radar system. And in fact, we have created a game for you that you can download now called Treasure Hunt for Falling Walls. And then turn on the Bluetooth system, please, and search for the treasures that have been hidden for you outside. So during the break, after the session, we'll find these treasures. Of course, we know that some people like to trick others, so you can push the sabotage button. Don't worry, nothing bad will happen. You will just be seen by others as if you were a treasure, but during that time, you won't be able to see any other treasures. Now, of course, gamification is important to spread new technologies, but in the end, we want to use it for something useful, to map resources and who uses them. And in fact, there is another app called Swarm Pulse that allows you to geolocate measurements of noise and light, but also to put geolocated text out there. And that could be links, actually, to photographs or to movies. And so it becomes clear that now we all together could map our entire environment around us in a crowdsourced way and make this data available for everyone to understand climate change, environmental change, and many other things that we care about. So the nervous net could do many things for us. It can do these real-time measurements. It can create greater awareness and help actually to advance scientific understanding about our world. It should help us to create collective intelligence supported by digital assistance. And also, it will allow us to support favorable self-organization. And so how does that work, actually? Well, we would have to use real-time measurements to create real-time feedbacks to allow complex dynamical systems to self-organize like magic. And we have applied that in various systems, for example, urban traffic light control. And it turns out to be much more efficient uh, to have traffic light respond to the local traffic flows and coordinate locally to each other than to control it with a traffic center in a top-down way. Gains for everyone, including the environment. And we can do a similar thing in production. Industry 4.0 is the keyword. So basically, the products would be able to communicate with each other and with the machines in order to tell them what to do. And in the end, of course, we could build a pluralistic, participatory, smart society based on the principle of subsidiarity. So, I personally believe that a new historical era is about to begin. Welcome to digital democracy.